All right, folks. Um, mm, sorry, I had my face full of charcuterie. Uh, we are updating the name. Here we go. Josh versus Dan. Giant is 3-1. Josh is 2-4. Um, while we're doing this, we updated some standings out there. So let's take a look at this. Uh, Adam is sitting at the top at 4-1. Dan following up. Dan and Kevin following up at 3-1. Matt uh, with the... Um, uh, Matt is with the Tosses Oracle sitting at 3-3. Alex is sitting at 2-2. Andrew at 2-2. Uh, so Alex and Andrew, two of my picks for the top four, are sitting on the outside. Uh, then Josh is sitting at 2-4, almost done on the day. And then Patrick, uh, Patrick's deck is uh, being piloted by Mark at this point, is 0-5. All right. Let's go back to some gameplay. So we have here... Let's take a look. We've got Dan, who's sitting at 3-1. He is piloting Kiki. So Mason should be excited for this one. Another Kiki match on camera. And then we've got Josh with Simic. Sitting on the other side, coming in at 2-4. This is his last match, and then Josh is done for the day. All right, so. Deck list, let's take a look. This is Josh's first time on camera, so we've got Narset, we've got Oko, uh, we've got Birds. We've got some really solid stuff here. I think Josh drafted a really solid cube list. I think there's some really good things here. Um, I really wanted to see Josh go into black on this list um, to get some extra removal and some extra threats. Uh, I think this list is a very solid core for kind of a first VRD experience. Uh, I think it's a very buildable list, uh, but you know, it is definitely a list that's going to sometimes provide, uh, you know, it's problems. It's just not gonna be able to deal with other people's stuff in the way that you want to, uh, or sometimes it's gonna run out of cards. I think those are the issues that you're gonna see. All right, so uh, oh, let's clear some winners here because right now, we don't have any yet. We've got no one sitting in house. Dan doing the solid super grinder card flips there, moving those cards in between his hands like a pro. Majestic magic. And Josh throwing back. That looks like a, oh, that's a big mole, right? Yeah, you guys are good, good to go. And so we are we are all clear as they're going to begin. I'm going to give them the clear to start here. Yeah, you're going to go. All right, getting the good to go. Dan starts off with a get probe. Getting getting while the getting's good. Probing while the probing's hot. Going to see a hand and throw a library of Alexander down. He's going to draw a lot of cards. That seems like a pretty good start for the blue red deck. Um. That's not a fast bond, but that is uh, too blue. That's not too bad. Uh, we're looking at a list that has Mental Misstep, Mystical Tutor, Stern Scolding, and Swan Song. So it does have some defensive counter spells. Uh, it's got a Thieving Skydiver, which isn't going to do too much versus Dan, who don't I don't think actually has an artifact in his list. Uh, Dan is floating in it, no artifacts whatsoever. So the main deck Skydiver doesn't do much. Uh, But the Oko meets with a remand. He moved into the yard. He was like, oh, look, this Oko's going to say goodbye. But no, it's just going to go back to your hand. Um, it is not fully gone. Um, it looks like a mana drain in the hand. Uh, a mountain. All right. So... Especially if this was, a, as what I thought it was, a mold of four. This does not look like a good game to start to, uh, for Josh. Um, you know, it's going to be hard to beat that many counter spells when we go down to four like that. So let's see what we got here coming up. Oka resolves. Uh, that's a that's a solid start, though. Let's 
that's gonna resolve. Make your food token. Uh, no, actually, Oko's gonna resolve and turn a Mox into a thing. He's just like, I'm gonna give up this mana and start the beats at this point. But we're gonna flash in a whole breacher and see if we can get some counter beats going. Uh, Dan's at 15. Josh is at 19. We're gonna swing into Oko, hitting him for two. We're gonna get out some of the big boys so we can read it better. We're gonna preordain. Look at the top two before we go pitching them back to the bottom. See what we got. We're gonna, looks like we're going to split them. Draw one. Dan doesn't have any burn in this list, right? So he's not going to... A lot of the Kiki list might have a little bit of like a Prismari command or something like that. Uh, nothing like that to get this going and nothing in particular to abuse the whole breacher right so it's just going to be natural abuse uh, Dak Faden is the only thing that really abuses the whole breacher uh, allowing him to force his opponent to uh, draw two and then discard two so nothing other than you know whatever you're going to draw which uh, Josh has uh, some of right Josh has got Gush um, uh, they'll got Gush entered up in the board right so Josh has Uro um uh, and Josh has his own Narset as well. So Josh doesn't have a lot of extra draw. Though he does have the Sylvan, which is absolutely brutal, right? Uh, the, the the Sylvan with it. Uh, but that is our... So we got a V-Click, which is another Hole Breacher um, potential combo card there, right? Where we're going to look and see. So the question is, do I want a treasure enough to get rid of one of these? Uh, the Metamorph probably is worth it, right? Like, the Metamorph... I'm giving you a new card, but the Metamorph's really good in this setup. So, let's go ahead and get rid of the Metamorph. You get to draw a card. Do not get to draw a card, actually. So, you're getting rid of it no matter what. Um, there's no downside to getting rid of it. So, we're going to create a food... He knows what's in the hand. There is a mystical tutor and a blight steel, so he can mystical for a tinker, um, and then the tinker can get worm coil, which seems pretty good, right? Like that's definitely not bad, uh, but you've got to be able to do that through uh, a fistful of cards. So um, who knows how that goes? This is a match where Josh probably wants, you know, something like an Allosaurus Shepherd or a uh, the Veil that went elsewhere, or something to help resist those number of counter spells. Uh, but we will see how it pans out here. As I said during draft coverage, you know, this is a deck or similar to a deck that I've drafted many times. And I, I get the allure of this deck. There's nothing much I fault in Josh's deck at all. Um, it is, a, other than maybe the Lodestone Golem one, uh, it is a deck that is easy. It looks like it's going to do a, a lot of, easy to, to you know, want. It looks like it's going to do a lot of powerful things. It is going to do a lot of powerful things. Probably a little light on land, on the 12 lands. I mean, that would probably be, if there is something I'm going to fault, it's that. Uh, I run some pretty greedy mana bases, but uh, 12 is a really greedy mana base, even with, you know, the couple dorks he has in the, the lower curve. Um, the mocks, double mocks. And yes, if you're counting the mocks, this is pure land, then you're running 14, but the, you know, they have to say that you're counting the mocks, this is pure land. Um, it is definitely one that, in my experience, uh, at VRD at least, doesn't pan out the way I want it to, right? Well, it does not have the counter. Or is not willing. He has the Pestermite, so maybe he just doesn't care, right? Um, yeah, there's a good chance. You know, if he's got the... I can't see his hand, he's keeping it tight, but there's a good chance he just doesn't care. How about the Worm Coil? Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I assume I mean, he could get the metamorph. It, it, it's a valid target, but I don't think in this instance, I think the metamorph or the, the worm coil is what you want. So uh, I don't see the Pestermite in hand right now. So right now the worm coil is a threat, right? Like uh, we're gonna go ahead and swing for three with the elk. Looks like we've got 12 to 19. Preordain's already in the yard. Got lots of mana, that's for sure. The the token on the end's a treasure off of the Vendillion Click Hole Breacher setup. If he has the either Pestermite or Kiki, it's over, but I don't think he has one at this point. But we do have a Snapcaster. So we're going to snap and preordain, which makes sense. One of those is a land of some type, a blue-red land, and I cannot tell what the top one is, but he does not look. Yeah, they're both going to the bottom. That's what I figured by the looks of those. It was not a red card, which is what we want it to be at this point. Um, we're going to fly over for five. 12 to 14 is our numbers. We're going to swing in for a big whopping nine. Maybe he's thinking about it. And I think he has to go into the worm coil here. You want the life, you need to do the counter race. Like, nine takes him to three. You go back to 20. There's not. The elk doesn't do anything for you. Like, sure, it can block one of the ground guys, but I don't think it's a big deal. So I think you have to swing in with. I think you swing in with both. He can't double block. He doesn't have burn. Is he really gonna pass the turn with no swing? It's an interesting choice. He's gonna. So we're gonna throw the breacher in front of the elk, trade that out. Go to six. We should life. Yeah, go back up to 20. You might hear some overflow here of a upset child. I, I hear one. Oh, and we've got a second. A second. Uh, I'm assuming we have a second worm coil engine, right? Um, though a Vendillion click may not be a bad play either. We've drawn the metamorph back. It comes into party. Now the question is, would you love me if I was a worm? Or would you love me if I was a click? Decisions are being made. Something was declared. I don't know what. I'm going to assume it's a worm coil engine. Um, no one was targeted with a click, so... And it is a Kiki. And that is enough off the top, so. He had the Deceiver, he might have been able to milk it out anyway, uh, but Kiki ripped from the top. will do the job. And Dan takes down game one. of the blue plus color matchup. Yeah, no, no, I just heard them saying in the other room, right? Like, Josh's game was a multiple four, right? So you got to remember that that was a pretty good game for a multiple four. I mean, that's uh, uh, pretty impressive. All right, so we're 
going back into our board, seeing what we can produce. So let's take a look at our deck lists and see what we got here, right? So uh, Academy ended up in the board for Josh, uh, just not enough artifacts, which makes sense. Uh, the, he, the tracker would have been okay with that. Uh, Ashiak Dream Render seems decent because it can, you know, just potentially rip away, you know, the only possible wins. Um, that's, you know, he's not going to be stopping tutoring a lot, but there, uh, but, you know, it can rip away the only possible wins, potentially a fetch. Um, defense grid obviously seems like an absolute go-to, an absolute house. So those are the two quickly off the top of my head that I think come in, uh, and, and maybe something else there, right? Um, for the twin list, um, <coughs> Potentially no rod, right? I like, got uh, no rod. He has nothing that affects. No rod shuts off um, double mocks, shuts off Zern orb, shuts off top. Um, so those are going to be your big ones that no rod shuts off. Uh, potentially food tokens as well. So I think I'm bringing in no rod just for the chance of shutting off the double mocks. Uh, Cage doesn't do anything. Um, I don't know if you want Brotherhood then. Casting the Fire is decent. Uh, but for sure, I want the Null Rod out of that. Um, I don't think the Pyroclasm in particular does much. Uh, so they're still in Mole here. So uh, this is, I mean, there's no rounds in VRD, right? But we are, you know, moving forward um, closer. Again, let's take a look at the standings going into this. Uh, this is Josh's last match. Um, Matt is probably doing his last match about now as well. Um, we have two more matches out of Patrick slash Mark. Uh, Swifty has three more. Kevin has two more. I know he was in playing Matt, no, in playing Alex as we left, and Alex has two more, so they'll have one more after their match. Um, and then Daniel, um, and Adam or uh, Dan's playing right now here, and then Adam's 4-1 with two matches left as well. So my original call for the draft, uh, I had said I thought that um, the lists I liked best, the list that people I thought were going, I thought Adam, uh, Alex, Swifty, and Matt were my top four. Um, I said Ad Ad Adam and Andrew were my top two. Uh, and then Adam and Swifty were my top two. And then Matt and Alex were in the next. Um, so I called Adam well, uh, but my other predictions seemed off. Uh, you know, I originally bet against the uh, combo Thassa's Oracle slash uh, and reanimate list, and then it was doing really well, and I thought maybe I had bet wrong, but now we're at three and three. We'll see where it ends up. Um, and my, um, you know, looks a little better in my predictive hope there that that list was two in, two different things, um, and not necessarily humming as well as it could have. Much to our Chicago friends' uh, pleasure, Kiki is uh, doing well here. Uh, as I said, I don't know Dan well, or I don't know Dan at all, really, but uh, I know uh, Jason and uh, several people vouch well for him. And, uh, you know, he's uh, vouched that he's a heck of a player and he's a, a cube aficionado. So, um, you know, obviously very good at knowing what to counter. Uh, every match I've seen him in, he's been super good with the counters. Uh, and Adam, super local grinder. Um, he tried to get really cute in the draft and do the Arcane Savant stuff, but we had banned that a long time ago. It doesn't work. But uh, obviously that shows that he was paying attention and that he's heads up to what could potentially be absolutely broken because um, Arcane Savant is absolutely broken. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully uh, these guys are enjoying this and we've got some really good um, you know, potential new blood to get our next Josh's going back. And that's at 12 lands, right? Like I said, uh, the one thing I'm not really a fan of here is his 12 lands, um, even with the two, two moxes, which I kind of count as point fives. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that, you know, last time he bowled a four, and then here... Um, Uh, 
Uh, we, we see a mulligan. So this one looks like he's going to keep here. Um, so we're going to put something back. Start with a death right. Um, is it, how is the death right in this matchup? Um, I don't think death is there was a deck that particularly. So Josh has the Misty and the Windswept, so he's got two fetches. Um, and Dan is running no fetches. Uh, he's got the Islet, which can get to the yard. So, um, you know, that's right. Probably not going to do too much here, but the, the life part uh, is probably, you know, more particularly good. Uh, Top's going to be good here on the mole, right? Uh, Top's going to see him some more cards. Um, I mean, I think one of the big issues here is that, you know, Josh is going to be really in this matchup relying on the either the big upheaval win, which of course is going to, you know, be a counterspell issue. Or the Tinker into Blightsteel win and come on in. Three and four, I'm out of here. Oh, yeah, here. All right. Uh, well, pop on in for a second. Shut the door. Pop on in. All right. Well, we're going to join on here on commentary by Matt for a few moments. Uh, he's going to yeah. head out and take his drive. Uh, all right. So you ended up three and four, huh? Yeah. 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 So wh where do you think it went wrong? Not having an LED kind of sucked. Not having an LED, so you, so you, <laughs> you balked off of the uh, the breach when you lost the LED, which yeah. Yeah, probably makes sense. Uh, is that where you ended up going the reanimator package with it as well? Yeah, because okay. I did not plan on doing that. Right. It did pretty well uh, in Discord 25, but I, it's not where I was wanting to head. Right, <laughs> now, for sure. All right. Uh, you heading all the way back tonight? Yeah, probably. Okay. I can get home probably about one. Yeah, that's right. You lose an hour going east, so I mean that's but that's not too bad. Nah, so. I'll be all right. All right. It was very fun though. Definitely, Good. we'll come back. Yeah. No. Is this your first face to face one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, with you guys. Right. Right. Okay. I've, I've run some. Okay, you've run some. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got a brotherhood in here. We're gonna wipe out the defense grid. He'll draw off the top. Or assuming, I mean, I guess he could. I'm assuming he's gonna wipe out the artifacts and the grid, not and I have to think not so. kill the death right. I mean, that makes a lot more sense. But, uh, so, uh, all right. Well, yeah, I, when we looked at the list, I was like, well, this feels like it's going. I picked you just sitting right outside the top four, and it looks like I was right in the corner. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, three and uh, four. Yeah, three and four. <laughs> it's going to sit right out there, so. People people brought in a lot of good uh, hate pieces. Kevin's deck was just brutal. Yeah, that really? was That was the worst one to play against. Yeah, I, I, this was definitely Kevin's best draft so far. Like, he had some interesting pieces. He had some pieces I didn't like, but uh, there was some stuff that, like... His deck is something. It was uh, <laughs> it was hateful, you know? Yes. <laughs> so, definitely, like, yeah, he could definitely, like, he couldn't stop you if you went quick. But, like, any, if you had any setup that you needed, like, all yeah. your little draw and all that, like, yep. he was going to rip you apart in life, so... It was rough. So, all right. Tinker so, time. Oh, tinker time. Um, he's got... He's got force negation, so I mean, but if he doesn't have it here, it doesn't. Um, so can he? This is always the problem with bites. I like other tinker targets sometimes because just the bite steal is, um, you know, it's like does he have the boomerang which he brought? Could he bring the boomerang out of the board? The cast into fire which he brought out of the board. Yeah. Like he's really only got. Does he have? Is he the one with cryptic or no? He's got cryptic, right? Okay. So he's got he's got brazen borrower. Yep. He's got multiple. Oh no! <laughs> oh, the actual dream. <laughs> the dream of the '90s is alive in Portland, my friends. Oh. All right, so what's his answer now? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yep. Stupid. Yep. All right. All right, folks. Good well, uh, that is uh, that's VRD, uh, the Chinatown Jake, and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this stream up, and uh, we'll see you on the next uh, video here. I'm gonna go find out what's going on. Adios. All right. Thanks a lot.